In the previous video, we learned how to update a string. And in today's lesson, we're going to cover the final important topic of this section, indexing into strings. In many programming languages, accessing individual characters in a string by referencing them via their index is a fairly common operation. However, in Rust, it's not so simple. For example, imagine you have a name and that name is going to be Bob. And as I mentioned, in a lot of programming languages, if we want to reference B or O or any one of these letters, we can do so by indexing. So here we're going to type in first letter, and that's going to equal the name at the index of zero. In a lot of programming languages, this would work, but unfortunately in Rust, this does not work. If we were to run the program, we'd get this message that we could not compile our program. And that's because the type string cannot be indexed by an integer. But to explain what's going on, we first need to discuss how Rust stores strings in memory. So let's move on to the internal representation of strings. A string is essentially a wrapper over a vector of type U8. Let's look at some examples of properly encoded UTF-8 strings. Here we're going to create a greeting, which is going to equal a string from Hola. In other words, here we have a vector storing a string of four bytes. Each character here uses one byte, and we can verify that by typing in let length equal greeting dot length. And just as a friendly reminder, length returns the length of the string in bytes, not characters or graphemes. So let's debug that length and see what we get as an output. And what you'll notice is that we will get four as an output because this string contains four bytes. And that was a fairly simple example because we just used regular Latin characters. But what if we start introducing special characters such as Haloa? Well, in this case, we're going to end up with six bytes. And that's because OR takes two bytes of storage. And this is what makes simple indexing so difficult. If we were ever to try to index the greeting at the index of four, hypothetically, we'd only be requesting part of the character since we'd be referring to one of the two bytes. And that doesn't even make sense on its own. I mean, this is clearly at the index of four, but once again, it's made up of two bytes. So we can't just refer to it using a single index. When it comes to UTF-8, there are three relevant ways to look at strings from Rust's perspective, as bytes, scalar values, and grapheme clusters. And grapheme clusters are the closest thing to what we'd call letters. Let's take a look at these three views. For this example, we're going to use the Hindi word namaste, written in Devangari script. And I apologize in advance for my pronunciation. So here we're going to type in greeting equals a string from namaste. And we are missing a character here. Next, we're going to type in let length equal greeting dot length. And when we debug this length, what we're going to get as an output is 18 bytes. With that basic information, let's take a look at how this string looks like as bytes. And to do that, we're going to get rid of both of these since now we know that this is 18 bytes. And here we're going to type in let bytes equal greeting dot as bytes. And now I'm going to print the result using my special debug syntax and provide the bytes so that when we run this, we'll get back the following output. And these are the 18 bytes that are used to create our string. This is ultimately how computers store this data. So that was the first way to view this. The second way is to view it as a scalar value. And to do that, we're going to create something called Unicode characters of type vector of characters. And that's going to equal greeting dot characters dot collect. Then once again, I'm going to print the Unicode and it's not supposed to be called Unicode characters. It was actually supposed to be called Unicode scalar or scalars. And we will rewrite this Unicode scalars. And when we run it, what we're going to get back are these characters. And here there are six characters, but the fourth and the sixth are not letters. They are diacritics. Diacritics are signs such as accents, which indicate different pronunciations of the same letter. As you can see, this E right here has a small accent right above the E. And this indicates a different pronunciation 
of the exact same letter. And it might even be in the other direction. And that can mean something completely different. Or there's also the French cédilla, which I honestly don't know how to pronounce in English. I keep on saying cédille, but in English it just looks hard to pronounce. Cédilla. Or whatever. Anyway, it's the small accent that you have under the C. So that's why we get these six back. These are diacritics. So that was the second view. Moving on to the third view, which is viewing them as grapheme clusters. And I've honestly never said the word grapheme out loud. Do let me know in the comment section down below how that's actually supposed to be pronounced. I think it's called grapheme, but it might be graphem. I have honestly no clue. I hope you guys understand that I'm referring to this word here. Anyway, if we look at this word as grapheme clusters, we end up with what humans would call the four letters that make up the Hindi word namaste. Although when you run this, you're probably not going to get a perfectly human readable output. Because once again, this contains some diacritics. But regardless, it contains the four characters. Now Rust provides us with different ways to interpret the raw string data so that each program can choose the interpretation it needs, regardless of the human language used. And a final reason why Rust doesn't allow us to index into a string to get a character is that indexing operations are expected to always take constant time, O1. But that performance guarantee isn't possible with a string because Rust would need to walk through the contents from the beginning to the specified index to determine how many valid characters there are. Moving on, it's finally time to talk about slicing strings. As we've just learned, indexing into a string is often a bad idea because it's unclear what the return type should be. Should it be a byte, a character, a grapheme cluster, or a string slice? Therefore, Rust asks us to be more specific when we use indices to create string slices. So here we'll type in let greeting equal string from hello. And what we're going to do next is grab a slice by typing in greeting at the slice of four to six. And then we can debug S. And as an output, we should get that S is equal to or. So in other words, we need to be very specific with this section of data that we want to pull out of the string. We can't just say at the index of four because Rust doesn't understand what we mean by that. It doesn't know if we want the character or the bytes, it doesn't know. So we need to be extremely specific with what we want. And in this case, it's the slice from four to six, which contains or. Now, if we were to do zero to two, we would get back hal or even ha, because two is not inclusive. We have to do dot dot equals if we want two to be inclusive. By going back to or, if we were to incorrectly index it or slice it, for example, adding the index of four to five or the slice of four to five, Rust will panic. And it will actually give us back a very descriptive message, something far more descriptive than what I told you. Byte index five is not a character boundary. It is inside or. And these are the bytes from four to six. So once again, we did not grab the entire character. We only grabbed one of the two bytes, which doesn't really mean anything on its own. Or it might mean something, but it just wouldn't be the information that we are looking for. The best way to work with parts of strings is to be explicit about what you want from them. Do you want characters or bytes? For example, here we have a word called konnichiwa, or I mean, that's I guess that's just a Japanese greeting, but it's a word. And what we want to do is loop through it. We can type in 4c in word, and I don't know why I did the Python syntax, or I know very well, it's because I program in Python, debug c. This will not work because a string slice is not an iterator and it's not specific enough. Rust will tell us to either use characters or bytes. So here we either have to insert bytes or characters. And then when we run this, it will run just fine. It's going to be able to loop through the bytes of the word. And as you can see, we have a lot of them. Otherwise, if we were to type in characters, we would get back each one of the characters. And in both cases, we were being extra explicit about which data we wanted to get back from that string slice. Now getting the grapheme clusters from strings is more complex, and it's not even included in the standard library. That's why I haven't shown you how to do it yet. We'll have to save that for a future video. Just to sum up today's video, strings might look complicated, but generally, as long as you're explicit about what you want to get back from them, 
they are quite easy to work with.